Hey everyone, this is Patty with NL Facts. We're here at the uh, Remax Center, home of the St. John's Curling Club. I'm with Jamie Korab, gold medal winner. Thanks for letting us stop by, Jamie. Uh, my pleasure. Glad you could come by and see the place. No worries. Uh, so I think yesterday marked 11 years since you guys won gold medal. Yeah. So <laughs> can you bring us back to that moment, what it meant to you, what it meant to your team? Yeah, well, firstly, I didn't even realize. It wasn't until I got a text around 10 a.m. My wife said, congratulations on 11 years, and it took a second to clue in. Um, but, uh, yeah, 11 years later, um, I guess going back to that day was uh, a bit surreal for us. It was on a Friday, and um, it was the evening before, I guess on Thursday, when we started getting emails coming in because this was 2006, so Facebook was barely invented. It wasn't mainstream. No Instagram, no Twitter. So. Yeah. You know, and we're in Italy, so we've been getting everything by email. The email started coming in saying uh, the kids are going to have the day off school, or at least the afternoon off school. I believe it started here at 1.30 uh, in the afternoon. Yeah. So going back to that, we knew going in that, you know, there was going to be literally probably all of Newfoundland and Labrador and a good part of Canada watching. So, uh, and then that day was just, uh, you know, to get ready for the game. I mean, I, I'd need about an hour to, you know, run through the whole thing. But what it came down to, we had a meeting at our hotel. And we said, you know what, we're going to go out and play in the biggest game of our life. Um, worst, worst case scenario, we're going to lose and come home with an Olympic silver medal, which is pretty darn cool. Um, but, uh, you know, we said, let's just go out, let's leave it all on the table, let's not get too much pressure, and let's go out and have fun. Yeah, definitely. I think I speak for a lot of Newfoundlanders out there that we remember exactly where we were. I was in a house with like 30 people. At junior high, we got the afternoon off, so definitely a great time for Newfoundland. Well, to what you said there, actually, a lot of cool things have happened since the Olympics. A lot of really cool things happened at the Olympics, obviously. But the thing that probably is one of the coolest things and resonates the most with me and kind of ties it all in the experience is when I talk to people, they still remember where they were, which is pretty cool because I can remember a few moments, you know, when Team Canada in 2002 Olympics beat America to win the gold medal. I remember where I was there. I was actually with Brad and Mark, funny enough, from the Olympic team. But those moments, the fact that people remember, it's still still pretty cool to hear those stories. Yeah, exactly. I, I, that, like I said, I definitely remember where I was. So when you guys came back to Newfoundland, like just run us through that. Like, what were the reactions with people, the press? Like, what was that like? That must have been surreal. Yeah, I, I remember these very, uh, very clearly. For us, coming home was uh, was pretty interesting because it was a bus to. Uh, I think we had to get a bus to Milan, and then it was fly to Toronto, change planes, you know, change planes there. Then we went to Halifax and had to wait there, and then our flight was delayed, but. Um, uh, Arthur O'Brien and Fred Jordison were coming back from the East Coast Music Awards and yep. PEI and we ended up, they had their instruments with them so we ended up having a little jam session at the Halifax airport. Nice. I sat with Arthur on the way home and then when we landed, so it was just a full experience coming home and we're on cloud nine. We had gotten our gold medal I think three days before. Um, get to the airport, I think around one in the morning we were late landing. Um, and we were coming down the escalator and they had to hit the emergency stop. There was that many people in the luggage area. Um, you know, the crush was almost on, there's that many people. So oh, wow. I don't think we left the airport until 3 a.m. Uh, we literally probably seen every person that was there. We had a, a family drove in from Lewisport. The dad took his kids in and said, I want my kids to be here for this moment. And there was so many cool things. Uh, and that was just a day we got home. And then this was 3 o'clock, and then we all came here to the Remax Center and had a huge party. It was close to daylight, I think, before we actually left. So, uh, and that was just day one. And then every day following, there were so many... Um, pretty neat things that happened. We had a big autograph signing at the convention center that went to the Fog Devils game as it was that Friday. And uh, it was just a really cool time. And there was so much excitement. And uh, it was just great to be able to bring the medal around and show it around to people. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, think, I think I was at that Fog Devils game now that you said it. I think I got your autograph there. But definitely everyone in Newfoundland felt that, felt that gold medal. And it was, it was just a surreal week right after yeah. leading up to that. So this week, next week, and actually, we got the Briar coming up in St. John's, Newfoundland. It's been yeah. it's been years since it's been here. Forty five years since we've forty five years since it's been here. Uh, Team Go Shoes ready to go. Just talk to us about that. What does it mean for them to play on home soil with all the Newfoundland audience and all that sort of thing? Like, what does it mean to the team? It's. Uh, I think the the fans are going to be a huge boost. The last time. We played a big game at mile one, I believe it was the 2005 Grand Slam final. Made the final against Kevin Martin. Unfortunately, he didn't come out on top. Last year in Paradise, Brad made it to the final. Unfortunately, he never came out on top, and not that there's a theme here, but I think playing in front of the hometown fans and the crowds and the excitement, I think really plays into that, and they feed off it. Um, 
to play here, have a Briar here, I mean, we've said for years we'd love to play in front of a Briar. The closest we get to a hometown crowd is Halifax. Uh, now there's some new players out there in all the lines of Canada are behind you when it's when it's in that case. But uh, I think it's going to be an amazing experience. They're looking forward to it. I've chatted with the boys, and uh, they're, in my opinion, the number one team in the world right now. Um, the other team that's probably just as hot is Nicholas Adin from Sweden. This is a briar. He's not here. Uh, so I think the boys going in are going to be the favorites, and um, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be uh, jam-packed down there. It's going to be good. Awesome, awesome. Is there any matchup we should look for going into it? Uh, Any other teams? Some big matchups for Brad would definitely be against Northern Ontario. They're all around the same age. Uh, they have a very similar training regimen, philosophy with curling. Brian Fry, the third on the team, used to curl with it. The last year I curled really competitively was I curled last year in New Brunswick, but with Brad was in 2010. Uh, and it was Brad and Mark, Ryan Fry, and myself. So that's a great matchup there. Uh, Glenn Howard's back. He's always a wily veteran. And then coming out of BC, you've got John Morris. Uh, Brad actually went to the World Juniors with John Morris back in 1998. So lots of, uh, and, you, and then you've got Team Canada back, which is Kevin Cooey, which uh, that's always a good game. That usually comes down to whoever got the last drop in the last end. So lots of great matchups. All right, cool, cool. So, um, Thanks for letting us drop by. I appreciate yeah. it, man. No, this... it's my pleasure to be here. The Briar, just to sum it up, it's going to be awesome. Um, there's going to be uh, 11, 12 teams in the Briar. Uh, the draws pretty much go from Saturday until the next Sunday. Uh, the Briar patch, which we kind of never really talked about, that's going to be amazing. That's at the convention center. You need a game day ticket to get in. But there's some amazing acts going to be at that. There's the Punters, Billy the Bruisers, Shaniganuck, um, really good East Coast crowd. And the Briar has a really kind of cult following where a lot of people go to the Briar every year no matter where it is. And it's a, a holiday for them. They see friends and family every year. So there's going to be a lot of people coming here. And uh, the 2,000 people that are going to get in there for this party, uh, it's going to be amazing. So if you're if you have a game day ticket, go check the Briar out, but don't wait till too late in the evening because uh, there'll be a lineup to get in. That's for sure. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, we appreciate the interview. My pleasure. Definitely looking out for the Briar and the uh, the, the after party, like you just said. <laughs> uh, the whole Briar itself, uh, curling is uh, yeah. first and foremost, but the Briar patch is certainly a uh, close second. There you go. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Cheers.